Sometimes the smallest change of perspective can actually be the biggest change in your life. For me, one of those moments was seventh grade geography class when Mrs. Thompson turned out all of the lights in the classroom and she got out a globe and she turned on a flashlight saying, this is the sun and this baseball here is the moon and started orbiting the moon around the earth, illustrating for us what the moon's phases are. And she said, every once in a while though, the moon will perfectly align in between the earth and the sun, creating what's called a total solar eclipse. And she said, if you're lucky enough and in the right place at the right time, you can actually be underneath that moon's shadow. And from the earth, you would see the entire sky in the middle of the day suddenly turn completely dark like it's midnight. That was the day that my love for astronomy started, and it's why I'm here today. This image here is a photograph that I took of the Great American Eclipse of 2017. I've been doing photography professionally for about 12 years and never thought I would be a photographer. That was not my plan in life. Uh, I ended up, I had never even touched a camera until I was 20 years old. And it's actually because I was going through a very severe depression in my life. And I still, to this day, struggle with, with um, wow, I thought this was, I'd, Saying this in front of 2,300 people is very weird, but, um, but I still have clinical depression. And um, I think I was so desperate to find beauty in the world around me, and I quickly realized I can actually merge my passion for astronomy with photography, which a lot of photographers do. It's called astrophotography. And eventually I realized you can actually push the envelope of photographic technology in a way where you can reveal parts of reality that we can't see with the naked eye. And that's when I started having a lot of fun. So I'd like to share some of those images with you. Um, we've, a lot of you have probably seen illustrations of the Milky Way galaxy before that look kind of similar to this. Um, I'm not a scientist, by the way. I don't have a degree or anything, so take everything I say with a grain of salt. Um, <laughs> I'm just merely curious, but, um, you know, every dot, every speck you see is another sun, just like ours, with planets orbiting around most of them. They're all solar systems, and, you know, it's so massive, 100,000 light years across, and our sun actually orbits around that center point every 250 million years. I mean, you can't comprehend it. Um, but most people don't realize you can actually see this galaxy from Earth, but we're inside of it, so you have to change your perspective a little bit. So pretend I'm holding this galaxy in my hand, it's like a CD-ROM disc, and you turn it 90 degrees so you're looking through the thin side of the galaxy, this is what the galaxy looks like from the inside. Do you see that? Am I, I don't, it's hard to explain, right? But um, the center of the galaxy, you see that, that bright spot, it looks like a cloud of dust just above the horizon, that's the center of the galaxy, and the spiral arms go up, and our solar system orbits around it. And so, I was so captivated by this and I just was photographing for my own curiosity because I wanted to experience this, you know, for myself. And um, a lot of people get afraid to think about this because it makes you feel small. Um, and I can understand why that can be fearful, but I'm going to explain a little bit later why I think it's really important that we do so. Um, so uh, I've photographed a lot of partial eclipses before. Uh, this is one of them. It's, the moon is partially covering up the sun, but not all the way. I've done a lot of those. I've photographed a lot of lunar eclipses, but a total solar eclipse, 100% totality, was something I've always dreamed of since that day in seventh grade. And so I thought, what do I do? I mean, as a professional photographer, where do you go for this once-in-a-lifetime moment? And this also ended up becoming the most photographed moment in human history. It's a lot of pressure as a photographer. But I'm also a pilot. I've been flying powered hang gliders. It's my all-time favorite thing to fly uh, for many, many years. I just love seeing the Earth from high up above. And ever since childhood, I've been obsessed with rockets and just, I've always imagined what it would be like to see the Earth from space as, as one. And uh, I, I built dozens and dozens of model rockets, and one of them was six feet tall and flew 1,200 feet up in the air. And I can't believe my parents actually let me do this, but um, my favorite rocket of all was called the Astrocam, because it actually took photos of the Earth from high up above. And this is in the early mid-90s, way before drones or even digital photography. 
So with these passions all merged together, I kept wondering for the eclipse, if I got up high enough in the air, could you actually see the moon shadow moving across the Earth's surface? Like that's something selfishly, I just wanted to see that, I wanted to witness that. And every fiber of my being just told myself, do whatever it takes. So I was very determined when I had this thought in mind and I started looking at all the flights around the country. You know, I couldn't afford a private jet to do this, even though I did consider it. And I compared all the commercial flight paths around the US with the moon shadow path, which it's only like 60 miles wide and it moves really quickly. So I was just pulling my hair out. I asked for friends help and everything. And I was just like, the odds of this happening are very slim to intersect it per perfectly. But I did find one flight that kind of matched the moon shadow path almost perfectly. And it was on Southwest Airlines. And it was leaving from Portland, Oregon to St. Louis, Missouri. And I've always wanted to go to St. Louis because my dad was from there and my dad unfortunately passed away. And I've always wanted to see where he was from and my dad's grandson lived in Portland. I was like, maybe it's meant to be. And there was literally one seat left. So I booked the flight. But now I live in Manhattan, so I live nowhere near totality, and now I have to get to Oregon. So I, fly, I book another flight to fly all the way to Oregon to catch this flight. So I get to Oregon, but the biggest thing I'm nervous about is Southwest Airlines. And for those of you that don't know, Southwest doesn't have any assigned seating, and I really need a window seat. So I brought $600 cash with me, ready to bribe somebody for a window seat. <laughs> I mean, I've come this far, right? You gotta do whatever it takes. Like, there's a lot at stake here. So I get to the airport and I'm like sweating and shaking, I'm so nervous, and I get to the gate and it says that the flight is 25 minutes delayed. I'm like, I'm, thank you for understanding how <laughs> awful that is. I'm like, oh my God, what am I gonna do? But finally, somebody come on, came onto the PA system and she announced to our gate saying, thank you so much for your patience, ladies and gentlemen. There's actually a reason why we've delayed your flight today. As most of you have heard of by now, there's a very historic moment happening in our country. A total solar eclipse, for the first time in 99 years, is going from coast to coast. And these three gentlemen standing next to me here are three representatives from Southwest Corporate that came out here from our headquarters in Dallas to be on the flight with us today. And they brought, they brought a eclipse glasses and all the flights were eclipse-themed drinks and they're all free on the flight. And we deliberately delayed the flight just in time to be right inside the moon's shadow, which is called totality. Thank God. <laughs> okay. <sighs> now I'm thinking, I should really introduce myself to these executives. And so I get all my camera gear out of my bags and put them over my shoulder to show I'm legit, you know, I, I might know what I'm doing. And I introduce myself and I share my story and I show them some of my photos and they said, those are your photographs? I said, yeah. And, and you flew across the country to be on our flight to take photos of this? I said, yeah. They're like, okay, come with us. I'm the first one on the plane. It's like, pick a seat, any seat. And they introduced me to the captain, the first officer, the flight crew, everybody, and everybody came together trying to help. Now my next goal is to find the cleanest window. It's, it's really hard to get a good, clean shot from an airplane window. And there's layers of plastic and it warps stuff. And, and so uh, I'm going through all the rows and I run back to the front of the plane. I said, you guys, I can't shoot out of any of these windows. They're all too dirty. The outside of the plane's too dirty. And I kid you not, the captain himself gets out of the plane and washes the window. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> yeah, thank you, Captain Jackson. Yeah, seriously. I was like, I can't believe this is happening. So now I'm getting really into it, and I'm like, well, I might as well ask for more now. And I said, <laughs> look, I have been envisioning this for so many years. I really want to make it look like we're in space. But the only way to do that, shooting through this little eight-inch window, is I need to get at least a 180-degree view. So I need to do what's called a photographic mosaic, where you take a bunch of different photos and you put them together later like a giant puzzle. So is there any way you could possibly turn the plane around? <laughs> <laughs> that was his response too. And he's just rolling his eyes. This is obviously an absurd request. And he's like, uh, I would have to get approval by the FAA for that. Like, don't get your hopes up. So we climb up, we go to 35,000 feet, and he ends up doing a practice turn just moments before totality started, but it wasn't good enough. I, I, the, the eclipse is getting all warped in the image and I'm not getting enough of the earth in it. And I'm like, oh God, I'm so close, it's almost there. All of a sudden the flight attendant sitting in front of me in the jump seat facing me gets a call from the captain and she says, um, John, the captain wants to know how was that turn? <laughs> I was like, 
are you kidding me? Like, well, since you're asking, it wasn't good enough. And she's like, he, he said it wasn't good enough. It's got to be a wider turn. And so we ended up climbing up another 4,000 feet to do wider turns. And he ended up turning the plane around five different times. And he sent me the flight path later. And this, yeah. Isn't that insane? Yeah. So, and that river in the photo, by the way, is the border of Oregon and Idaho, that, that border right there, which is so crazy. Um, and it's so symbolic, too, for the division of America that's going on right now. Anyway, so you, you saw the, the result earlier. This was it. And so that's the eclipse story. There it is. Uh, oh, thank you. Um, so, I knew I had something here. I knew that I, I was pretty sure nothing like this has existed before, and I was really excited to be able to share this with people, to educate people on what a total eclipse is and encourage people to go see one. And there's 2,300 people here. Please go out of your way to see a total solar eclipse sometime in your life. It'll change you, I'm telling you. But what I did not expect was that people would be so moved by this. I realized this, this moment was one of the most uniting moments in United States history. I mean, for one day, everything was positive. All the news networks and media, ABC, NBC, CBS, Fox News, they all covered a positive story and everybody united. Like, when's the last time that happened? And it's very simple why. For a brief moment in time, everyone in America became an astronomer. That's as simple as it is. It's what astronomy does. It's instilled in our DNA. It's who we are, quite literally who we are. Our ancestors for thousands of generations have looked up at the heavens and wondered, what is this? Who are we? What are we? Why are we here? But now, in just the last hundred years or so, which is a blink of an eye in human history, we have electricity now. So for the first time ever, we have too much light pollution. We don't get to see that every day anymore. And we've lost our sense of curiosity and wonder. And this moment, the director of astrovisualization at the American Museum of Natural History called this image uh, the ladder to space, which really meant the world to me. He said, in many ways, this is actually better than images we take from space, which I think is ridiculous. It's a lot to process. But he, said, he made a good point. He said, because this is at a familiar altitude, we've all flown at this altitude before, so you can appreciate the detail on the Earth's surface and see how close space really is. We are already in space. We're on spaceship Earth, right? But we need to take care of our planet because the only thing keeping us alive is that little thin blue line in our atmosphere. And you could see the fragility of it and the vulnerability of it just from the moon's shadow and how thin it is. And we need to approach it with empathy and we need to start seeing each other as humans who are all struggling with something. And we need to remind ourselves that there are no borders in space. And there is only one race, the human race. And the world, if you keep on viewing the world as a small little pale blue dot, as Carl Sagan would say, it humbles you. We all could use an ego check. Take care of each other. Thank you.